We're an Instacart family. Oh my goodness, we saved so much time with same-day grocery delivery. So we joined Instacart Plus. And now we're saving more money. We get unlimited free delivery on orders over $35. 5% credit back on pickup. And a family account to shop together. Did you know members save $460 a year when they order at least once a week? I do now. See how much you'll save. Visit instacartplus.com for two weeks free. Average savings exclude membership fee. Individual savings may vary. Credit back excludes alcohol. Paid membership auto renews. Additional terms apply. Percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a pin shot for the unknown, unexplained, and unusual share their experiences with UFOs, ghost encounters, near-death experiences, and more for your own unique blend of Wendy's Coffee House Curious. And now, here's Wendy. Well, we hit the ground running in 2020, and it hasn't stopped yet. Tons of new information coming out, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and I'm just going to give you a, a, basically a rundown of what this last week surfaced in the news, because it's just been, and of course, it's a broad mix. I, I, I like all the different headlines, the science, the metaphysics, the whole nine yards. The, the one, though, that is maybe the showstopper is a fun one. It's the UPS guy. And everybody who's got any snow, ice, anything like that around can relate. This is called the greatest delivery attempt of all time. You can find it on Twisted Sifter or you can Google it. And here he is, backs the UPS truck up to the driveway. And you can see it's a nice ice skating rink, slick, shiny. And you can see the guy, the homeowner at the door, motioning to him. And the UPS guy said, well, he just said, or the homeowner said, I told him leave it at the end of the driveway. I would figure out how to pick it up. No, 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 no. What UPS does is above and beyond. What he does, he gets to the back of his truck, uses it as leverage, puts the box in front of him, scoots the box, and kicks off with his foot, and the box goes all the way up to the house (laughs) with the guy standing in the garage. And the UPS guy, thumbs up, back to the truck, and on to the next delivery, uh, sliding (laughs) back to the truck. So it's winter, and we, we like it. So there you go. That, but the headlines, there's some really cool headlines, and this has to do with where we're going be above and beyond in our, our medical and science abilities. China, they have a robotic worm that will burrow into your brain. Now, this sounds like sci-fi, the Wrath of Khan or something like that. Okay, what, what it does actually is helpful. What they want it to do is to deliver a medication, a treatment of, sci- of some kind to a specific area, and that's what this worm is designed on a good day, <laughs> unless somebody, you know, goes in and corrupts it, technically it is designed for a good purpose. And you know how that goes. It's out there. Anyway, that, that's one of the, the cool things. It's not a tapeworm. You know, it's just it's a, it's a different kind of technology that we're getting into now that I think we're, we're going to see some amazing uh, just results with this. And the other thing, uh, they're still trying to figure out what's going on with uh, drones out in Colorado. And the interesting thing is some of the people who were looking into it from the um, law enforcement side have backed off, saying, well, it's not anything illegal. <laughs> and supposedly, like, some sky, you know, the, the weather, weather watchers, the weather, weather sleuths are out there trying to figure out, because it's in the sky. It's not weather, but it's related. So uh, they're trying to figure out still what might be happening. And then, of course, there's the other version somebody said well it's by all the nuclear these are the the missile sites and they happen to be operating out there well there's two sides of that missile sites where military might be housed so maybe that's who's in charge of it and they can't say because it's secret but everybody knows (laughs) and it's a big secret i just find that fascinating the interview with an accidental exorcist i posted on my facebook page you'll have to find that one yourself And then my favorite story from 2019, the bubbles. The universe is made of tiny bubbles containing many universes. This is my world. This is what it's like. And I posted something about an experience that I had at work where there was a bubble of something that happened I have no explanation for, and yet it happened, but that bubble shouldn't have been there. And now the universe, if it's like this, tells me that that's exactly where it should have been. So I'm speaking in code. My guest, I'm hoping... (laughs) 
<laughs> can follow because she's just as quirky as I am. And she's been doing all sorts of fun things in St. Joe. If you need a medium, if you need somebody to check out whether your house is haunted and then help clear it if it is, then you might want to check out Marianne Podraski. Marianne, good morning. And afternoon good morning, and evening, Lindsay. depending on which bubble yes. we're in. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm in the morning bubble right now. Okay, good. Hey, you. Yeah. Um, you sent me some really excellent pictures of places where you've gone and taken ghost photos. And this isn't like the, the little misty, foggy thing. These are, there's one that has an, an outline of a person behind mm-hmm. you. Um, mm-hmm. When did you discover you could do that? Um, I've been actually chasing around uh, spirits in different forms for over, I'm showing my age, over 45 years. And I realized that I could actually communicate with them when I was in my late teens. Uh, before, I used to do dream dream things. I mean, I would go to sleep and have these be- vivid dreams, and they would either come to pass or it had a message in it for me. And when I was started really getting inside my own head, I realized it was kind of crowded in there, <laughs> and that, and that really their spirit energy is everywhere. It just you have to choose to tap into it, and people like me are kind of a conduit, like a moth to a flame kind of thing. And I've just been doing it forever. It feels like. Well, and I and think that way. that suggests tenure. It also suggests that you've had a chance to work out some of the kinks. I mean, when when you first get started or you first realize you have these abilities, it can be overwhelming. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, it's like standing in a crowd and people keep talking louder and louder and louder until you know who it is you need to tell to shut up. <laughs> you know, it's kind of <laughs> you have to pick and choose, pick and choose what you're getting and realize whether it's for you or for someone else. So it can be kind of confusing, but it's a lifelong process, really. I don't think you ever become totally expert when dealing with spirit energy. I think you just have to roll roll with uh, the information that you get well, and, and hope, hopefully find exactly where it fits. It sounds like you've carved out several niches, though, with, the, with your background because you have. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't remember the laundry list offhand. You're also a Reiki practitioner? Yes. Yes, I'm a uh, I'm a, a medium and a clairvoyant, a Reiki practitioner. I'm also an ordained minister. I do spiritual counseling. I do uh, home cleansings and uh, dream interpretation, and I give readings individually and in groups. So I just kind of dabble with whatever energy I can I can draw. Well, and it seems you like to travel to places that are haunted to stay there and kind of I don't know give the ghosts a hard time. <laughs> Sometimes I do, yeah. Sometimes you got to shake them up a little bit. Normally, I come from a place where it's extremely respectful because I'm in their environment; they're not in mine. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like when uh, I spend a lot of time at the Crescent Hotel. It's one of, it's actually my favorite haunt on the planet so far. And I just basically tell them I'm back and let's go. And they're they're very receptive to me. More often than not spirits are receptive to me. If they hold back, it's because they're afraid or they have low energy or it's just not a message I'm meant to get. Mm-hmm. But eventually I'll get it. And we ne- when we travel, we never stay any place that's not haunted. I have I have standards. <laughs> I have standards. <laughs> I have standards and uh, actually I I gravitate towards the history and the and the hauntings. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a history junkie, and anytime I go any place that's really, really old or has a, has a long and colorful history, there's always something there, even if it's just residual energy. That, that's a big deal if it can hold energy that long. Well, I was I, not really aware that I traveled to places and stayed in hotels that were haunted until the activity kept happening in different hotels, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Is this me, or am I, you know, mm. are they already there? And then... When we stayed in the Sagebrush Inn in Taos, and my dog was there, too, and whatever was in the room scared her. Mm-hmm. She tried to crawl up under the under the um, the bedspread mattress and get him to hide. The TV came blaring on, and then I remembered in the middle of the night, 
that I had an arm over me and um, mm. thought it was my husband. And I realized the arm had uh, was a very hairy and larger arm. It wasn't his. I'm like, oh, wow. Oof. So some of these things. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the hairy part would get me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it was it but, was just you're half awake, half asleep. I assumed I knew who it was, but I remembered opening my eyes. And thank goodness I did, because that's when I put the clue together. And then he was also in the wrong position of the bed. To, he wasn't facing me. So so those are the kind of things, just, you know, the tip of the iceberg that I yep. was getting, figuring out there's more going on here, and I need to figure out what's happening and why I'm, how I'm able to tune in. We're going to take a break. I want you to come back when we talk, because there was an article in this uh, St. Joe News Press, and I think I get the name of it here, but um, I want you to talk about your, your mom and your grandmother. It's Wendy's okay. Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio, back in a few. Wendy's Coffee House, Casey Mo Talk Radio. Thanks for tuning in. My guest is a jack of all trades. She wears many hats. Marianne Podrowski. Podrowski. Did I say that right? Podrowski. Well, you're pretty Podrowski. There you go. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you you you've been working at this for a while. <laughs> I've been practicing. It's just yeah. a matter of making that practice actually work. <laughs> It is a name, isn't it? And my maiden name isn't any better. <laughs> okay, well, good. We'll stick with that one. And for right now, it's just Marianne. So, yes. Okay, that when you're going to the hotel, you said that you have standards. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it has to be haunted. Yeah. And they have to behave. I, if, if we stay, if we stay at newer places, the energy is just completely different, and you get then you're just reading the land more often than not, but. A historical place has so much that goes with it, and there's a lot that goes on in hotels. Um, It's everything from uh, people going there to commit suicide, to accidental deaths, to heart attacks, and things like that. And then you have the people that come through for various things, weddings and things like that, and they all leave a little bit of a fingerprint Mm -hmm. behind. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you'd say the Crescent is your favorite. Oh, my God, yes, yeah. I've got sep- I've got several other hotels, but the Crescent is my favorite. I've never stayed there and not had an experience. Okay. And of course, it's world famous. It's been on all the TV shows and everything. And how about the Stanley? In, in- uh, I have not been to the Stanley only oh. because they won't let you do an open investigation now. Oh, okay. They control that, and they used to have uh, big events there with all the famous people and everything, right. but. Um, now they do not do that. They only do their own internal, and it would be a lot harder for me to show up there and just uh, do what I do. I'm not sure if that would be, if that would fly with them. Well, you don't so. have to say anything. I went there, and I tell you, they sing. The ghosts sing. Because ah. I was I was uh, with a friend who didn't believe any of this, and that's fine. When I went in, that, that he asked where the restroom was, and I and the ghost told me. And I said, down the stairs to the left whatever and mm-hmm. and he goes there it is i thought oh, okay we're communicating so i started listening and mm-hmm. mrs stanley plays the piano and the, oh yes yes the yeah. person who was there was sitting down at the piano and said that she would tell him what to play and she didn't like very many people on the piano but when i left uh, there was a whole there were other things that happened too they sang and the song was good night that one from uh, this is a lawrence welk show that my grandmother used to watch years ago good night Sleep tight till we meet again. Whatever there's a, and it's the yes. bubbles and the wine. I'm like yeah. until you know and until we meet again. And I'm like wait 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 wait. I'm not I'm not coming back here. <laughs> I was I was but I was surprised. But they were singing. And so I don't think you know. I think that if you're connected, Marianne, there's no way they wouldn't talk to you. I mean, oh, abs- absolutely, absolutely. My only thing is that I've got all these expensive and very uh, complicated toys, and oh, once yeah. you start bringing out the toys, it's really you're telling on yourself. Yes, yes. So you know, they, if they may want to control their mm. information, yeah. and that's fine, you know. But uh, I would have to be definitely on the down low. Uh, my favorite times to roam around are in the middle of the night because it's quiet. Mm-hmm and uh, early, early in the morning. But you can get anything at any time if you're receptive enough and if they want to communicate with you. So The article in the news press, I wanted to get to that because that talked about when you were four years old and um, knowing that this was something that you could do. But you also got a a really powerful message. Could you explain some of that? 
okay, when my earliest re- reminder uh, to myself, really, I, I, it's part memory and then it's part figuring out something was different. It was a thing where I could dream that I was flying. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was dreaming. Now I know it's something else, but I could feel my fingertips touch the leaf, the leaf tops on the trees, yeah. the very tops of the trees, and feel the wind on my skin. And I woke up one morning and had an orange leaf in my bed. Oh. And I thought, wow, okay, that's for my dream. Well, I was a little kid. I mean, I was in kindergarten, and it made no sense to me, but it did make sense to me because I was a kid. Yeah. I yeah. hadn't been told that stuff doesn't happen. Right. And I had this orange leaf and was seriously excited about it. Couldn't wait to tell my mother, put it on my bedside table, marched off to Catholic school, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I guess well, that was kindergarten, but I marched off to that right before Catholic school and <laughs> came home and my leaf was gone. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God, that's the only thing I had to prove it. And it before long, I realized that, there was so much stuff that you can't prove. Yeah. So I buttoned it up. Yeah. You know, uh, my mother always told me I had the best imagination of any of her kids. <laughs> and I thought it was really vivid dreaming and imagination. I didn't realize till much later that when you are flying in your sleep on a consistent basis, night after night, yeah. that you're actually astro traveling. And when I started becoming aware enough to feel myself come down hard, in a landing, yeah. so to speak, then I got it. I, I did some research. It was like, holy hell, I've been doing that. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> okay. And and then, but I kept a lot of things to myself because it wasn't really mainstream in my family. Well, you know, at that time, I don't think there was any mainstream with this because this is the most, I think, um, open that I've in, in, experienced in, in decades, the being able to talk about things like astral travel and out-of-body stuff because other mm-hmm. people... Who had been who had kept silent about it, like Robert Monroe back when he was doing this thing full full tilt in the yeah. late seventies and eighties. Um, th- that's just when it got started into being some kind of a um, maybe reputable experience yeah. and yeah. credible experience. So it's been a while that before we could even talk about it and compare notes because it's huge for people like you who remember doing this. I remember doing it. My husband remembers doing that the astral travel and, and having feedback and saying, this is what I saw and this is where I was. And those things are huge because it's a way of saying, this is a tangible reality that we are, that we are engaging and we are mm-hmm. able to get these abilities and work on improving them. So with that, mm-hmm. you, you realize that, okay, you're doing this. Where did you go from there once you felt more comfortable dealing with this? Well, I also had some telekinetic abilities when I was little. You know how you, uh, you're you kind of lost. I was lost in my own head a lot because there was so much stuff that I couldn't prove or put my hands on or understand. But I realized that I could make certain things in my bedroom, like my closet door. I could make it the, the door wiggle just a little bit and mm-hmm. unlatch. <laughs> but it, it hurt my head. It just killed my head. Uh-huh. I got these. I started having migraines, so I thought, well, let's taper that crap in and do something else, you know. <laughs> and, then, and, and, and let's not do that. Let's think about something else. Yeah, and Plan I, B. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've had some telekinetic experiences ever since then, but it was uh, with cooperation from spirits yeah. on the other side. It wasn't all me. Yeah. Because it, it it just it's a lot of brain, a lot of brain waves involved. Okay, so when your grandmother, um, later on in life, you had a, a really important connect, and this was a telepathic or intuitive uh, message you got. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't realize until much later in my life, well, I was 23, I think, when my grandmother died, and then my aunt finally told me that my grandmother had the ability to communicate with her deceased son. He had died when she was 10 years old, and I was like, why didn't you people tell me this? And they they thought it was her emotions. They just thought that it was the fact that she could never really get over it, mm-hmm. you know. They thought she was dreaming. I do not believe that at all. Yeah. And, and she spoke broken English, and what she could tell me was that he was just as real to her when yeah. he was dead. Okay. We're gonna, we'll take a break. But 
that I want to get into just a little bit more because I think more people okay. are realizing that this is this is another way to connect and there's more yeah. to that story. So hang on. Okay. So Marianne okay. Podres- Podreski. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> you're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. <laughs> okay. And if, if you're interested, she's local. She's in St. Joe. You can connect. And she also has old med- magic metaphysical arts on the Facebook page. Um, there's just so much more to this story and so much more that is going on under the radar that we can connect to when we quiet the mind and realize, like she said, there was a whole lot of people talking. And when I finally figured out who it was, then I could tell them to shut up. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes it's us doing the talking inside our head. And that's what oh, you yeah. have to quiet down first. All right. So quick yeah. break. We're going to be back. It's Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Thanks for tuning in. My guest knows all about ghosts, Reiki, haunted houses, clearing haunted houses, and a whole lot more. Marianne Podraski. I'm close, aren't I? Podraski. You're doing, you did very well that time. <laughs> you get ex, You get extra points. Thank you. Extra I slowed down. I slowed down yeah. and it worked. <laughs> yeah, you can't say it fast. No, no, no. Times. At least I can't. No, can't, no. no. Okay. Trust me. So getting into the thing with your grandmother and your mom and finding out that they didn't tell you that grandma spoke to her son uh, and really, you know, all that information you didn't get it until later. And then they thought she was just making it up and it was her imagination. There, I've done so many interviews with people who say, this is so real. And the information that they get is stuff that only they would know. And it's comforting. And it's a, you know, there's no physical body, but there's still a very genuine and a real relationship that continues. The connection is never really broken, you know, and especially a child, a child you give birth to. And he was sick his whole life and died when he was 10 years old. Uh, he had congestive heart problems, and he just really wanted to be a normal boy. And they thought it was her grief. Mm-hmm. They thought that her grief had such a hold on her that she was, you know, obsessing and dreaming. And I don't believe that at all because she was adamant to the very end. And the thing is, between her and I, she was – we used to just sit and sit next to each other. And I did not speak Sicilian, but I – felt like I could understand her and the same for her. And when uh, I was pregnant before she died, she had her hand on my belly and she was, she did have broken English. And she told me that I was going to have a girl and she pretty much told me a lot about her and it all came to pass. Mm -hmm. So I think the connection of love and uh, that energy never dies. Yeah. It just, changes form i think that all adds up to a definite spiritual connection that she had with her son and i believe me as Mm -hmm. well because i talk to her all the time (laughs) you didn't block it you didn't block it there wasn't a judgment there was like okay what next i tried to push it down but i find when i don't use it it comes back to haunt me i get sick Mm -hmm. i've had several catastrophic illnesses and i can't uh honestly say that uh, fighting it helps that. Mm-hmm. I feel much better when I work. I feel much better when I stimulate my brain with what I'm good at and what really interests me. And actually, I have absolutely no choice. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice. Okay. Well, you got a, a psychic tip from about one of your health issues that I think mm-hmm. is, is, a, is a real key that we still have those connections that they're looking out for us in that other mm-hmm. dimension. Mm hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, You're referring to my mother. Yeah. My mother had uh, my mother had many health issues over her life and eventually died from Alzheimer's where she could not uh, communicate at all. But I still had her in my head. Thank God. And uh, she had breast cancer was one of her illnesses. And it was on the left side. And I hadn't done a breast exam for a long time because I'm stubborn and guess I don't know. I guess I thought it wouldn't happen to me, you mm-hmm. know, like most women. And then I realized, yes, it's going to happen to me because I'm, I'm, I feel it. I feel it that it could and mm-hmm. it would. And I was laying in bed one night and she hollered in my ear. My mother didn't holler, but she hollered in my ear right before I went to sleep. Just do it. Mm-hmm. I took my right hand and put it on my right breast mm-hmm. and immediately felt a pea-sized knot under my skin. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I thought, oh, my God, this is not right. This is not right. I turn on my bedside light, and I put a marker, uh, a Sharpie yeah. dot on the knot. Next day, called my doctor. She said, get your butt in here. Mm-hmm. I went in there. She felt it. She said, this is not good. You're going, you're going tomorrow for a biopsy. So I went the very next day for a biopsy. Only what happened in the interim, I guess you'd say, there was no knot at all. There was no, no, no uh, tumor at all on the right side. But there were two on the left. Oh wow! That that they found with ultrasound. Uh-huh. It wasn't. It, you couldn't even feel them. Yeah. But there were two, and so I definitely feel like she gave me a huge heads up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you paid attention. And, you took it. You uh, yeah. You I responded. Had to. Yeah. Yeah. I had to, and and another crazy thing about that was I have this cat that I, I all my cats are rescues. They all come to me, and he immediately felt my fear, and that cat was like Velcro on me until I went through radiation and everything. Mm-hmm. He was he was just stuck to my side, trying to help me get through it. Yeah. So yeah. there was a lot of love going on, you know, the furry type and then the motherly type. And my mother was with me during surgery, too. There's a story about that, too. Okay. That's a tease. <laughs> you got, got... Uh-huh. Uh, Tease for the trap. Um, <laughs> well, she is... She's with me all the time. I mm-hmm. mean, I can I can almost summon her, and I don't like to use that word, but I can almost summon her. And I was really nervous about this. I thought, what if they get in there and it's even worse? Because you don't know until they actually cut you open and start mucking around in there. Right. And uh, in my uh, in my visions, I was having when I was knocked out under anesthesia. Uh, my mother was brushing my hair. And and running her hands through my hair, uh, I wore long hair as soon as I was able to grow it out. And she enjoyed my hair, mm-hmm. and she was brushing my hair. And so I wake up, and I'm in recovery, and I'm almost disappointed. I look over, and there's a nurse there. I thought my mother would be there. Yeah. And I said to her, my mom was just here, and she said, oh, no, you just woke up from surgery, and everything's okay. And I said, no, my mother was here. I reached up in my hair, and there was a purple barrette in my hair. Uh-huh. And and I said, oh, my God, she was here. And the nurse said, how did that get in your hair? Who did that? That's not supposed to be in your hair. And I said, that was my mother. And I carry that purple barrette around with me everywhere I go now. Yeah. Everywhere I go, because it it's symbolizes that no matter what, she was with me. And in right there physically next to me, and my father was running interference in the hallway to keep all the other dead people away from me because the <laughs> hospital is like a runway. I know, yeah. It's, it, it, yeah. it is a runway it's for very, yeah, very, very, yeah. very active, very active. And, I don't, you know, yeah. a lot of people don't pick up on that, but, man, that's traffic, high traffic. Oh, yeah, it's, it's hard to take. And when I went for my radiation treatments, it was hard to take because I had, there were all these people walking around, these poor, sick people, and I knew some of them were not going to make it, mm-hmm. and they had other, they had other spirit with them, and it was like it was torture going to my, uh, to my sessions, yeah. my treatment sessions because of that. Well, it part of it too so is much. that, at least in my experience, they would like you to get a message, you know, from point A to point B. The problem is point B doesn't always believe in the message, and so it's really, you know, you're between a rock and a hard place of, you can't interfere. And, no. uh, you know, and that thing is, it's, so it's, there's a lot of, um, I think, emotion and energy that goes with that, knowing that, and it's not that everybody is, is going to have a negative outcome. It's just there's a lot of spiritual support all different ways, like your mom was there to support you, to help you recover. And that's what the other spirits are there in a lot of cases as well, so, you, know, you know, helping, saying, okay, jumpstart, boost. It's energy. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I find that they try to help us a lot more than we even realize. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, they're throwing it out there. Not all people can pick it up. Not all people are meant to pick it up. Uh, You know, we're still left to our own devices to make our own decisions. Spirit spirit doesn't force you to do anything. But if you have, if you've ever had someone that you really, really love Mm -hmm. and that you really felt a soul connection with and they pass on, if we realize that they're not really totally gone. Yeah. It's yeah. not only a comfort, but it opens the door to receiving messages. It's you don't have to 
You don't have to be spooked out and all woo wooey all the time to be able to get the message. No, I got grandmothers too, and that that's exactly what you know, what happens. Okay, we're going to take a break because I want to come back and ha- you, you mentioned something while we were off the air about the the, the Ghostbusters and you know those demons yeah. are everywhere. So let's just uh, come back and address that real quick. Okay. okay. All right. All righty. It's uh, again. This is kind of all across the board talk here with Marianne, who does a lot of different things aside from looking for ghosts and staying in cool haunted hotels. So if if she's been there, then she's you know, that's a, a validation that the place is really haunted because she doesn't. Th- those are her standards. <laughs> I, like I have that. to have my dead folks. Okay. Okay. So there you go. We're gonna come back and talk with uh, more dead people or about more dead people or something along that line. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. The thing about the TV shows, you know, with all the ghosts, ghost hunters, and, you know, whatever form it comes in, is that a lot of times it's camp. And it's, it is, um, I hate to say, I won't say it. Okay, it's not real. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not real. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Okay. So uh, a lot of it. And I had an invitation to do a show, and I had the dream, this vision dream, and they, they put me in the dream on a slanted table. The table was not straight, not on a solid foundation. And oh. that was my clue that this show was going to be one of those that was kind of fictionalized to make it a l- extra scary and relevant. The people were going through an absolutely frightening for them, really, really scary experience. They didn't need to amplify it. So going there even stirred it up more. Anyway, so that's my experience. And I said no. <laughs> well, you know. that, that, yeah, I've been interviewed before. And because I told them that I was not afraid, mm-hmm. my interviews were, you know, well, we need, you know, we really want uh, stories about when people were afraid. Spooky. And I, uh, yeah. I said, well, I can't say that I wasn't kind of, uh, you know, freaked out for a minute, but you have to get a hold of yourself because really, I, I'm not an amateur, and it's been a long time since anything's made me scream. You know, I, actually, I can honestly say I've only screamed once or twice, and that was when I got pinched on the butt. But yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that was that's, provoked. That was provoked. That'll do it. That'll do it when you can't see who's doing it. But you know, well, even when I you can, to, <laughs> I, have to, I have to say, I have to say, it was a, it was highly entertaining, uh-huh. but it, it's not exactly something that you want all the time. Okay, so for you, you know, when you see people doing these shows, um, I don't, I can't watch them just because I know how much fiction is part of it, and it's, I just, I believe it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's disrespectful because you're putting yeah. stuff out there that's totally, completely untrue. And giving people the wrong impression that this stuff is always spooky and always negative, and you know that's us. That that's that's yeah. where the human factor comes in, where you're trying to amp it up. But that spirit energy is a completely different element, in my just for my opinion. Oh, ab- yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's very very few times that I've I've had anything other than maybe goosebumps. You know, I, and we also stayed at a bed and breakfast recently called the Bridgeford House in uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and it is actually on the National Register of Haunted Places, Mm -hmm. and that's recognized by the Library of Congress. It's a real deal, and uh, it was just full. It was like walking into that crowd, although this was a fairly genteel crowd, but we had all kinds of spiritual interaction of the human type. We actually saw spirits on my SLS camera. That's where they map out a skeleton that's so popular now. Uh-huh. Uh, we actually saw human beings engaging in, shall we say, romantic practices. Oh, okay. okay. And, they talk uh, about that. They, they weren't hurting anybody. Body. And they, yeah. they weren't hurting anybody. They were having a lot of fun. I, You know, it's okay. like, all righty then, we'll just leave you be. Mm-hmm. You know, but it was it was pretty crazy. I'd never seen that before. But <laughs> why not? It was a bed and breakfast. Oh, you well, know? yeah. I mean, that explains yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's uh, it's everywhere. I mean, all you have to do is be open to it, and it's there. Especially if if they can prove that it's there, then that's the place I'm going to gravitate to. Okay, so that's a recommendation there. Yes, that is the Bridgeford House in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. All right, it's a beautiful bed and breakfast, and it's even for sale right now. So if you want to buy a haunted bed and breakfast, you might look into that. Oh man, okay, so. My question is, how do you sleep in places like that? Because I don't want to go there for that very reason. They wake you up. 
for me, they wake me up. How do you sleep? Well, or do you sleep? You're just I'm, going to investigate. I'm always sleep deprived in a place that's really haunted. <laughs> okay, see, that's the deal. Always. Okay. I'm a poor sleeper anyway, mm -hmm. but, you know, I would rather lose sleep that way yeah. than uh, just tossing and turning and not being able to get comfortable. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, I have to basically tell them, you know, it's time for me to sleep. You know, shut it down. And I even, I, I know it sounds campy, but I even take a little sign with me when I travel. One side says the psychic medium is on duty. The other one says the psychic medium is not on duty. Please yeah. do not disturb. Yes, and that's so. real. That's real. Yeah, you kind of put the barrier boundaries out and say, okay, I need some peace. Chill. Just part it's of it is they're so excited. about grounding. Well, grounding. They, they're so excited because there's somebody who's finally, who, who connects a, lo a lot of times. And so then you get, you know, get that, that constant poking of, Hey, 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 and well, uh, living living people communicate. Why wouldn't dead people communicate? You know, if they've all got something to say, living or non living, I just find the non living infinitely more interesting. Well, I yeah, it, it yeah, it just depends <laughs> on where you're at. <laughs> yeah, it depends yeah, on how yeah. much trauma has happened there. So. Well, and I'm a graveyard girl too. I love graveyards. And people think the graveyards are terribly haunted. There is spiritual activity in them, but generally, dead people gravitate towards the live places where there's living people yeah. to draw their energy yeah. in order to manifest. And uh, there's not a whole lot of living energy in the cemetery unless their people are coming there to visit. Right. And I do think they check in to see, you know, has anybody put flowers on here? Or here's here's mom, and you know, let's let's let mom know we're here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of like a reunion. Well, they're following the people, and like you said, that's the one thing I had recently. Somebody had a, a ghost that was in their house and asked if the ghost could travel with them because they were kind of attached to the ghost. The ghost mm -hmm. is attached to the space and the memories and the connection of that area, so the ghost didn't plan on leaving. But one of the things the ghost did say was, "I can't continue connecting in this." Um, an intimate fashion because it takes too much energy and that mm -hmm. was so you know when you're when you're voicing that that's exactly what they said in terms of you know the the contact that was happening that it was taking too much energy and so from there I think you know, they were closer that ghost was closer to going ahead and moving on because of some mm -hmm. of that it's mm -hmm. Uh, the battery drain is a real thing. Yeah. I've had a seven-hour battery, auxiliary battery, one of those big heavy suckers, die in a matter of 15 minutes because there was so much pull from it. Mm -hmm. And when I go to these places and I investigate or actually do a haunted event, which I do every year, several haunted events, then uh, it's like I better take a boatload of batteries. So we gotta give your name. Of... Let's give your number out because we got we gotta wrap up here. But just just so your book's okay. solid, all right? <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be good. I'm, I like to stay busy. How... My phone my phone number is eight one six two six one six six seven eight, and that's my cell phone. That's my business phone, and I can be reached there or on Facebook on my old magic metaphysical arts. Okay. Page. Okay. I want to see some of this hardware you're talking about because this is this oh, is yeah. fascinating. The closest I got was like an orb necklace. You know, this this orb necklace that lights mm -hmm. up. Well, not an orb. It's it's a ghost detector, and it lights mm -hmm. up with a certain color. They've got the the regular size and the mini mini case. The regular size is about eighty bucks. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I need one of those yeah. now. Okay. Oh, okay. Shoot, so there you I'm go. Jelly. All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll connect. We'll connect. I'll give you the link. And oh, that'd be great. You can test that'd drive it. Anyway, that'd okay. be great. Mary Ann Podreski. Yeah? That close? That's good. You did good. <laughs> you did good. By the end yes. of this thing, you, by the end of this thing, you'll be able to sell it too. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Let's not go there. <laughs> hey you. We'll connect again, okay? Because there's a All right. There's, there's more than just the ghosts. It's the energy and it's around us and it's nothing to be frightened of. It's more or less of if you can do it, figure out how and why so you can connect more dots to the next level. Like I said, the oh, ghosts yeah. of the Stanley Hotel were laughing and joking and singing. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting I way. Think, yeah. I think they I think they enjoy us just as much as we enjoy them, really. I agree. I agree. Marianne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening. We're going to put this on the podcast link, too, as well. So till next time, stay curious. See ya.
Instacart shoppers know groceries. They know that you can't make guacamole with rock-hard avocados. They know how to quickly find those peanut butter pretzels you can never find. And they keep you in the know by giving you updates about your order along the way. Let Instacart shoppers help take shopping off your plate so you can get time and energy back for what really matters. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Instacart. Add life to cart. When things feel a bit chaotic, Instacart helps deliver milk and sausage. Add a little life to your cart. Get stuff from literally all your stores, from baby wipes to albacore. Add a little life to your cart. Instacart helps get your groceries. Your first three deliveries are free. Download Instacart. Add life to cart. Terms apply. 